Esta semana se encuentra en San José, Costa Rica, la doctora Basilka Sansin, experta de las Naciones Unidas, actual miembro del Comité Asesor del Consejo de Derechos Humanos y quien fue vicepresidenta del Comité de Derechos Humanos al momento de la revisión de la situación de Nicaragua en octubre de este año. Conversamos con ella acerca de las observaciones que el comité hizo sobre varios de los señalamientos de violaciones de los derechos humanos en medio de la crisis sociopolítica en el país y sobre la renuencia del gobierno a cooperar con los mecanismos internacionales que velan por el cumplimiento de estos derechos. Doctora Sansín, el Estado de Nicaragua presentó recientemente su informe periódico ante el Comité de Derechos Humanos, pero con siete años de retraso y sin contestar a una serie de asuntos requeridos desde noviembre de 2019 y sin asistir al diálogo con el Comité. ¿Qué valoración hace de la actitud del Estado nicaragüense? So first I could say it's very unfortunate that during the last session of the United Nations Human Rights Committee, we witnessed uh, two cases of non-cooperation of states parties, including Nicaragua. And this situation um, leads to uh, difficulties when assessing all the relevant developments in the state party, because the committee, in the absence of any responses to the list of issues that were shared with the Nicaraguan state, had to mainly rely on information that it has received from other sources. And in this respect, it was very important that there were a number of civil society organizations, both, both those that are from Nicaragua and other international organizations following developments in Nicaragua, uh, that were able to inform the committee about some worrying developments and um, concrete cases of uh, alleged violations of the rights under the covenant. ¿Y qué se puede hacer desde el Comité de Derechos Humanos de la ONU si Nicaragua está en desacato de sus deberes y compromisos como miembro de Naciones Unidas? So there is no doubt that each state party has an obligation to cooperate with the Human Rights Committee, which is established on the basis of the covenant, which is a treaty to which the state ascribed to. And therefore we would expect that the state parties do cooperate going forward, including uh, Nicaragua. Regrettably, the Human Rights Committee, as well as other treaty-based bodies, do not have special mechanisms through which they could enforce cooperation of state parties. So the entire exercise is based really on the constructive dialogue with the state party. And therefore, the committee will continue to reach out to Nicaraguan state, uh, inviting it to submit information, which is now, for example, within the follow-up procedure due to be received three years after the review. El Comité de Derechos Humanos celebra que Nicaragua sí está adherido al protocolo facultativo de la Convención contra la Tortura desde el año 2009, pero vemos hoy día un sinnúmero de denuncias de familiares de presos políticos sobre este tipo de tratos en las cárceles en Nicaragua. ¿Cuál sería su interpelación al Estado nicaragüense sobre estas denuncias? So the committee has, in concluding observations, expressed serious concerns about these allegations of torture and ill treatment, both in pretrial detention as well as in detentions, those uh, led by the government officials as well as clandestine detention centers. So the committee is seriously concerned about all these delegations and, of course, called upon the state party to comply with its, with its obligations under the covenant, particularly Article 7, but also Article 9 of the covenant requiring proper treatment also during the pretrial detention. Specifically, the committee also asked the state party to ensure that um, the persons that are still at the pretrial phase are not detained together with convicted persons and as well that um, the authorities provide proper segregation as per gender, also ensure that there will be proper health care conditions available, proper uh, food ratios distributed to detained individuals and imprisoned individuals. So all in all to comply with its um, obligations and well-established international standards as it comes to the treatment of detained and imprisoned persons. Ustedes precisamente cuestionan esta serie de condiciones en todas las cárceles del país, también la falta de visitas familiares y de los hijos menores de edad, racionamiento de comida y el confinamiento solitario por periodos prolongados. ¿Se puede decir que estos tratos 
song tortura? Well, these treatments that you just described are certainly not in line with state parties' obligations under the Covenant, and therefore the committee also specifically asked the state party to refrain from solitary confinements unless strictly necessary in individual cases which have to be accessed case by case and uh, only for the most necessary limited time period. So in order for this measure to be uh, proportionate as to the aim uh, followed. And these kind of solitary confinements that you described seem to be certainly outside of uh, the strictly required necessary solitary confinement as might be permissible in certain specific circumstances. But here you see the problem is that the burden to demonstrate that this is strictly necessary in the circumstances of the individual case is on the state party. The state party has to demonstrate that this measure was used with all the precautions and in a proportionate manner. And in the absence of any such information coming from the state party, of course, this then leads to the conclusion of the committee that this kind of treatment is not in accordance with its obligations under the Covenant. También señalan la falta de cumplimiento de los recursos de exhibición personal, el abuso de la prisión preventiva en el caso de periodistas, defensores de derechos humanos y ciudadanos opositores. Destacan también la alta politización del sistema de justicia y juicios plagados de irregularidades. ¿Cuál es su recomendación ante la obvia falta de justicia imparcial que impera en Nicaragua y su uso para castigar a disidentes? As you just mentioned, this is also another in a series of serious concerns that the committee expressed during this last review and independence of judiciary is, of course, a fundamental precondition for enjoyment and protection of human rights in any state party. And therefore, the committee explicitly recommended to the state party to ensure such an independence, which goes from the moment that um, judges are selected to then ensure their complete independence in all manners, including financial, uh, throughout the operation of their functions. Plus, it is very important to also ensure that individuals who are accused of any um, behavior contrary to the relevant domestic law have all the um, judicial guarantees are in, so to be able to really enjoy the right to fair trial. And one of the concerns that the committee expressed is also the lack of uh, possibilities of lawyers to really um, communicate with their clients, to be informed about all the accusations in time so that they will be able to prepare an effective defense for their clients and also communicate them to, with them throughout the procedures. So it is an obligation of every state party to ensure that such uh, communication from the moment that the person is informed of uh, any accusations against him or her is enabled. Otherwise, individuals are, of course, in the hands of the state party uh, and without the necessary uh, guarantees in order to protect their rights. ¿Y qué recomendaciones hace el Comité ante la falta de libertad de expresión en Nicaragua, el ataque gubernamental hacia periodistas y medios independientes y los encarcelamientos de ciudadanos por supuestas noticias falsas? Yes, very problematic because um, without the freedom of expression in the state party, of course, many other rights can also uh, suffer from, uh, you know, violations and restrictions. And, the Covenant in Article 19 provides very clear limits as to permissible restrictions to this right. And again, it is the state party that has to justify that on the basis of the domestic law, certain restrictions are permissible, but only when they are, of course, necessary, uh, following a legitimate aim and proportionate to the objective uh, pursued. And um, in um, the practice of Nicaragua, the committee received a lot of information that these um, restrictions have been abused for uh, other political purposes um, and that, um, in fact, um, the domestic legislation is also problematic in that respect because it seemed uh, to contain very broad uh, definitions 
of behavior that should be criminalized under domestic law and that affects um, media outlets and uh, journalists, human rights defenders in a very disproportionate manner without any clear evidence that these individuals or uh, legal persons are in fact involved in any actions which could be detrimental, let's say, to the national security or the rights of others. Ya son más de 3.000 organizaciones de sociedad civil que han sido canceladas por el gobierno desde el año 2018. ¿Qué impacto tiene esto en la ciudadanía y qué dice esta acción del gobierno? Well, certainly these kind of developments are very worrying because um, the um, open society means that, of course, individuals have to be able to express themselves freely, but also to receive an independent and impartial information from various sources. And um, the um, sanctioning, let's say, of uh, the individual uh, out media outlets or non-governmental organizations um, that are sharing information perhaps not the liking of the current government in any state party, of course, is contrary to the objectives of uh, this freedom of expression, freedom of association, even free a right to peaceful assembly when you know, people are expressing their disagreements in um, demonstrations and so on. So these are, of course, again, another um, very worrying information demonstrating the disregard for the state party's obligations under the covenant and uh, necessarily, as I said, also linked to possible violations of other rights, including participation in public affairs, which seems to be um, another concern expressed by the committee when it comes to the situation in Nicaragua, especially in relation also to um, the elections in 2021. El informe también cuestiona la impunidad en Nicaragua, la falta de independencia de la Comisión de la Verdad que fue establecida por el gobierno, una ley de amnistía y el calificativo que se hace hacia las víctimas como supuestos perpetradores de un intento de golpe de Estado. ¿Qué se necesita para combatir la impunidad en Nicaragua? There can be certain mechanisms established in various states, including Nicaragua, such as truth and reconciliation. Commission, but these then really have to take into account the needs of the victims of past human rights violations, especially when we are talking about serious and mass human rights violations. And in these situations where we are dealing with uh, such serious uh, patterns of uh, most egregious human rights violations, uh, impunity uh, should be ensured also by not allowing for amnesty for these most serious crimes. So any domestic law that would envisage uh, amnesty for such most serious cases of human rights violations would be contrary to the obligations under the covenant. And this is why the committee called upon the state party to ensure that no amnesty will be granted for these most serious violations and that the perpetrators will be properly uh, prosecuted and if convicted, um, then also penalized accordingly and especially very important that the remedies will be provided to the victims. Como comité también indican que el Estado nicaragüense debe restablecer el diálogo y la cooperación con el Sistema Universal y Regional de Derechos Humanos y permitir el acceso y colaborar con titulares de mandatos de procedimientos especiales que han solicitado visitas a Nicaragua. ¿Cuál es su llamado al gobierno ante la renuencia a permitir estas visitas? I think it's very important to stress that all the United Nations human rights mechanisms function uh, on the premise of sovereign equality of states. So to treat uh, human rights mechanisms as, as being biased or as being, you know, promoting only interests of certain uh, states against other states, I think is uh, unjustified and without any um, credible basis in the practice of these mechanisms um, since their establishment up to today. So participation and cooperation with this kind of international mechanisms, but also regional human rights mechanisms, is seen as um, a, a sign of the state's um, really uh, genuine intention to comply with their international as well as regional human rights obligations. And for these reasons, these developments where Nicaragua seem to be reluctant to um, 
provide avenues for such interactions and cooperation and specifically for not allowing certain individuals to return to the territory of Nicaragua just because they were involved in the performance of functions for these international mechanisms is uh, unacceptable and therefore the Nicaraguan state is ex expected to reconsider its position towards uh, such stance in relation to these mechanisms and um, as soon as possible uh, re-engage in such dialogues. I think this would be to the benefit of uh, the state as well as its people. Hemos hablado de una serie de asuntos preocupantes. ¿Cómo describiría en general la situación de Nicaragua? Well, I would not like to describe the situation in Nicaragua since I have not visited the state party and you know you have always first um, be there in order to be able to comment on certain developments. But on the basis of the information the United Nations Human Rights Committee received for the last review, there are really serious concerns about the um, downgrading, let's say, of uh, the respect for many of the rights. ¿Y cómo se compara la situación de Nicaragua con la de otros países en el mundo en términos de violaciones de derechos humanos en contexto de una crisis sociopolítica como la que existe en nuestro país desde 2018? I think it's very um, difficult to compare countries one to another, but one thing is certain, there is no state party to the covenant with the perfect human rights situation. Of course, the um, discretions or violations are to a different extent. Um, and um, as I mentioned earlier, in Nicaragua we have seen certain negative developments since the last review, and that is very worrying. This is certainly not the unique uh, case uh, in the practice of the Human Rights Committee, but um, the um, concerns expressed in the concluding observations and recommendations issued demonstrate that um, there are really, there's really a need for the state authorities to seriously review the recommendations and see what actions could be undertaken to improve the situation. Uh, and come back to the committee to report on the measures taken. Gracias por ver este video para seguir derrotando la censura en Nicaragua. Si deseas apoyar el periodismo independiente de Confidencial con una donación, puedes hacerlo a través de nuestro canal de YouTube. Lo único que tienes que hacer es ir al chat de nuestras transmisiones en vivo y dar clic en el botón Super Chat. Así podrás agregar tu comentario junto a un donativo. También puedes dar tu aporte en el video que más te guste, haciendo clic en el botón de Super Thanks, ubicado en la barra inferior de todos nuestros videos. Con tu apoyo seguiremos investigando y contando la verdad para informar a nuestras audiencias.